The best cards released for Commander in 2020 in black. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. Welcome to another top video. So we're gonna review all of the cards that were published in 2020 and pick the best ones for Commander in our favorite color, black. Let's check it out. Now, there were 172 cards published in 2020 that were either brand new cards or reprints. This is only black. I'm not counting hybrid colors and so forth. That'll, that list, that'll be another huge list at some point. It's just mono colored plus some honorable mentions. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to pick in groups five at a time, five groups. And what I mean by that is if you're gonna play Commander, you need to think in the totality of things in groups of cards. Because we have a singleton format, we can only have one alchemist's gift, for example. But we can have more than one of that type of card in a group. So that's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to present to you the top removal cards, the top board wipes, the top bomb creatures, the top graveyard fun, and the top card draw. Out of those groups, then I will pick five of each of those, and then we're going to pick the best cards that were published in 2020. There's so many good ones to choose from, and I also want to hear your thoughts on what were some things that I missed. But here's my list here, so let's get on with it. All of these will be in alphabetical order, and then you can decide which is the best of the group. First of all, in removal, these are the best cards that remove some sort of problem that your opponent presents to you. First up, Blood Chief's Thirst. One black mana, sorcery, destroy target creature or planeswalker with CMC of two or less. Take that, Tybalt. If the spell was kicked, instead destroy target creature or planeswalker. So pay one black to deal with a lot of little early turn plays from your opponent, or pay four to deal with any creature or planeswalker at sorcery speed. Next, Eat to Extinction. Four mana, instant, exile, target creature or planeswalker. Look at the top card of your library, you may put that card into your graveyard, so it's sort of a surveil. You get to exile that planeswalker so it'll never come back, or that creature for four mana instantly with some really epic, vicious art. Next, Feed the Swarm. One of my new favorite cards in black, two mana, destroy target creature, or enchantment. Black has very little recourse to deal with enchantments, and here we have a brand new spell that'll let us do that. All we then have to do is you lose life equal to the CMC of the permanent. Okay, well, there's so many great enchantments that are really going to vex you in Commander. For two mana, get rid of it, lose some life, who cares, you'll get it back, you're playing black. It is a sorcery, so obviously with the power creep, eventually this will be one mana instant speed, but for the moment, sorcery speed two mana with epic art. Heartless Act, two mana instant, choose one. Destroy target creature with no counters on it or remove up to three counters from a creature. So if you've got a, an opponent's creature that is all counter-based, you'll be able to remove those counters, very nice, or simply destroy the creature. So it's a good old Doom Blade with an extra little mode that might be useful instead to remove the counters other than kill the creature. And lastly, Firica's Libation. This is the instant speed destroy a creature or artifact. It's three mana instead of two compared to Feet of the Swarm. It's an instant. The catch here is target opponent sacrifices a creature. So if the opponent only has one creature, they must sacrifice that. If they have more than one creature, they pick. Same thing with the enchantments. So it's either or... Either at sorcery speed, destroy what you want. At instant speed, they pick, but hopefully they have one thing to pick, so they have to pick it. But two of them in the deck is even better than just having the one answer. Moving over to board wipes. Well, in a game of commander, perhaps the opponents are building up a big board of tokens or just too many utility creatures. Sometimes we gotta wipe the board. So one of the best cards printed in 2020 is Extinction Event. Four mana sorcery. Choose odd or even. Exile each creature, exile each creature with converted mana cost of that chosen value. Reminder, zero is even. Reminder, tokens have a zero casting cost. So that's how you're going to wipe a whole board out there of tokens because they have a zero even converted mana cost exiled. 
we got a new reprint here of Massacre Worm. Not only is it an amazing creature of 6-5, but when it enters it minus twos to minus twos to all of the opponent's creatures. You're going to wipe out so many creatures of your opponents, then they're going to lose two life for each creature that died, maybe from that board wipe or them dying in any other way. So six mana, six five, board wipe on a body. Love it. Pestilent Haze, three mana, sorcery, choose one. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn, or remove two loyalty planeswalkers from each planeswalker. All right, this is going to be a way to mass weaken planeswalkers and maybe even take them out. And it's going to minus two a bunch of creatures, especially those little mana dorks and other utility small creatures. Minus two, minus two, three mana. Love it. With some of the most epic artwork out there, Shadow's Verdict, five mana sorcery, exile, all creatures and planeswalkers with CMC of three or less from the battlefield and all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost of three or less from all graveyards. This is gonna hit you too, be careful. This is gonna exile all of these creatures of three or less plus planeswalkers. It could be this an amazing board wipe and then when you play this with this amazing art, the opponents will truly know that the shadows of death fall over everyone in the end. And lastly, in board wipes, Soul Shatter, three mana instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers they control. So not a complete board wipe, but it's gonna take out the biggest creatures and planeswalkers that they have. And for those that haven't really built a board state, it's gonna get the creature in question. So interesting board wipe here. This was published in Zedekar Rising. Moving over to bomb creatures, these are the creatures that are going to really sway the board in your favor. First up, Dirge Bat. 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, Flash and Flying. So bring in a 3-3 three, three blocker if you need it at flash speed. Then we've got Mutate cost of 6. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. So if you cast this for 4 and then later mutate something smaller onto it, the destruction happens. If you have a creature and then mutate onto it, it's going to cost six. So obviously the smarter play is play this and then mutate on top of it, destroy any of the opponent's creature or planeswalker, dirge bat. Grey Merchant of Asphodel, I love this card. I'm glad they reprinted it. Five mana, now this used to be a common, now it's an uncommon. Creature, zombie, it's a two four. When Grey Merchant enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. If you only summon Gary, all opponents are going to lose two life. Your devotion is going to be two, and then you're going to gain six life off of that. Obviously, playing a deck that is black focused, you're going to have a lot of cool things on the battlefield. What about a Massacre Worm? The three pips of the Massacre Worm plus the two of Gary, that's five damage to all opponents. You gain 15 life. Speaking of life, you're probably doing some great life shenanigans in a commander deck that is black tinged. Marauding Blight Priest, three mana, three two, Vampire Cleric. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. So you're gonna be gaining life somehow. There's many ways to do that in black, of course, even like lifelink creatures and so forth. Whenever you gain that life, all the opponents lose life. Little by little, little by little, they're dying. And that's what you wanna do, take out all your opponents at once. Nightmare Shepherd, I love this card. Four mana, four four demon. It's an enchant, uh, enchantment type of creature, so be careful that it doesn't get disenchanted. Four four flying. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a one one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. So you bring back creatures that died as tokens. They come back a little bit weaker, but then they come back with every other ability. And there might be some ETB effects that trigger when that happens. So Nightmare Shepherd keeps your creatures coming back for more. And lastly, one of the great bomb creatures that was printed in 2020 was Sir Conrad the Grim. Five mana for a 5-4 legendary creature, Human Knight. Whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. That huge wall of text is basically telling you when creatures enter the graveyard, whether from the battlefield, off the top of the library, etc., from a hand discard, Sir Conrad deals one damage to each opponent all at once. Even someone that's minding their own business over there is going to get damaged because someone else was doing stuff. Then, 
one and a black, each player mills a card. So everyone is going to mill one card. With a four player game, there's got to be a few creatures that are going to go directly from the library to the graveyard and then Sir Gwyn will trigger for each time that happens. Best case scenario, all four of you mill a creature for damage to all opponents at once. This is not a tap ability, so it can be done as soon as Sir Conrad is summoned. Next, we're going over to the group of graveyard fun cards. In a game of Commander, things might go long and things might end up in your graveyard. You want those things to come back to your hand or to the battlefield or back to your library so that you can get the advantage back of those cards that got used up. So that's what this category is about. First one is Agadim's Awakening. This is one of these modal double-faced cards that on one side, it could be a land if you need a land. You do have to pay three life to make it come untapped, but if you need a land, here it is. But what I care about it most in this category is black, 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 plus X. Return from your graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost of X or less. So the more mana you pump into this, the more creatures you will be able to bring back from the graveyard directly to the battlefield with amazing ETB effects. Hello, Gary. The more mana that you have for this, the better. Awaken those Agademes. A little bit less complex is Call of the Death Dweller. Three mana sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards with total converted mana cost of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch counter on either of them, then put a menace counter on either of them. So you're gonna bring back some of your smaller things out of the graveyard to come back to life. One of them's gonna have death touch and then one of them's gonna have menace or, or, or both. And so for three mana, you can keep bringing back some great stuff like perhaps that one cat that everyone liked to put in an oven. Here's an interesting graveyard fun type of card, Drana, the Last Blood Chief. Five mana, four, four, legendary creature vampire cleric with flying. When Drana attacks, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard, you return that card to the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter, and it also becomes a vampire. So you attack an opponent that doesn't have any defenses. They must then choose something out of the graveyard, it comes back to life with a plus one and a vampire. Some cool fun shenanigans from the graveyard with Drana, the last blood chief. I just noticed that she's cut her palm and a bunch of blood is coming out of it. Just notice that. Rise again. Five mana, sorcery, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So no fuss, no muss. It's a little expensive. It's a sorcery speed, but it gets the job done. And having five mana in commander is not a big deal. Bring back something amazing from your graveyard at a later date for five mana back directly to the battlefield. You're in business. And lastly, Thwart the Grave with some of the most amazing artwork by Wiley Beckert. Six mana, sorcery. Cost reduction. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature in your party. And remember, a party includes a cleric, a rogue, warrior, or wizard. So you can reduce this down all the way down to two black mana if you've got a lot of party action going on. Even if you've got one or two, it'll decrease it a pretty good amount. Return target creature card and up to one target cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you definitely get one creature and then you can get one other cleric, rogue, or warrior, or wizard from your party. So more cards out of the graveyard, more good. And lastly, we talk about card draw. These are the spells that are important in Commander because you can't just rely on top decking the next great card. You wanna get ahead by drawing more cards as often as possible. So how about a bad deal? Six mana, you draw two cards, and each opponent discards two cards, and each player loses two life. This is not a bad deal at all. Losing two life or drawing two cards is amazing. And then having them discard two from their hand, that's gonna wreck their plans so well. And again, six mana in a commander deck, if you're playing things right with mana rocks and ramp and all of that, six mana is no big deal. Not a bad deal at all. Next up here, we've got two cards that are very similar to each other, so I'm gonna cheat and include both of them. So the first one, Blood Price, four mana sorcery. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand, the rest at the bottom of the library, you lose two life. Okay, four mana, get two cards as you look through four. Dark Bargain is very similar, four mana. It's an instant though. Look at the top three cards of your library, put two of them into your hand, and the other two into your graveyard, and then this deals two damage to you. So they both deal two damage, they're both four mana, one's a sorcery, one's an instant, 
One lets you dig through four cards, the other digs through three, one puts it at the bottom of the library, one puts it into the graveyard. You can decide, based on your deck, which of these two is the one you really want. Another such card, Funeral Rites, three mana, sorcery. You draw two cards, lose two life, then mill two cards. Once again, if you're doing graveyard shenanigans, like those other graveyard fun cards that I talked about, that's no big deal. You're putting into your graveyard things that you might not need or can bring back if you play your cards right. Pun intended. Not exactly card draw. It's a tutor effect, and those are kind of rare nowadays in standard sets, so hold on to the old ones, the old copies that you have. Here we have Grim Tutor reprinted for the first time in a while. The first time that was printed was back in 1999, and that version of that card is around $135. So if you're able to get one of the Corset 21 versions, and there's like a million of them, you can get a Grim Tutor, three mana, sorcery. Search your library for a card, any card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle, you lose three life. You do not have to reveal, you do not put it at the top of the deck, you just go get the card. With enough mana, you can go tutor for the thing that you need and play it right away. The opponents don't see what's coming because your tutor has grimly helped you, taught you, you know what I mean. And lastly for card draw, this card's so much fun, peer into the abyss, seven mana, sorcery. Target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards currently in their library and loses half their life, round up each time. How about drawing half your commander deck and of course keeping all the best cards down to seven? Yeah, you lose half your life, but you're playing black, maybe black and white. You've got ways to get that life back, no big deal. Grey Merchant, etc. Exsanguinate, etc. You've got ways to get the life back. And here this lets you draw a ton of life. Now, pro tip, there is also the two card kill combo of Underworld Dreams plus Peer Into the Abyss. Underworld Dreams damages an opponent when they draw a card. Peer Into the Abyss says target player draws cards. You can target the player that's the big problem, have them draw half their deck, they lose half their life, and then 40 pings of damage off of the Underworld Dreams it's a really cool, weird, mean combo. And if you have a way to replay this peer to the next opponent, more power to you. So those were the top five cards from each category printed in 2020, either brand new or reprints, that you need to know about to put into your commander decks. But wait, I also want to give honorable mention to a few very cool commanders that might helm your decks. Let's take a look at those. If you're interested in making a mono black deck, how about Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose? Three mana, one three, Vampire Cleric. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So life gain shenanigans happen, and then opponent losing that much life. Pay five mana. Creatures, all creatures you control, gain lifelink until end of turn. So if you've got a bunch of creatures, give them all lifelink, attack an opponent, you gain that life, and then the, another opponent loses that much life that you gain. Really fun card here if you're playing a mono black commander deck. Athreos, Shroud Veiled. Six mana in Orzhov colors. You get a 4-7 legendary enchantment creature god, indestructible. As long as your devotion to white and black is less than seven, this is not a creature. Well, at the beginning of your end step, put a coin counter on another target creature. Whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So put coin counters on your opponent's best creatures. Somehow they will die or get exiled. They come back to the battlefield under your control. You can do this to steal their commanders and they cannot put that commander back to the command zone because the commander did not change zones. It went from the battlefield to the battlefield. It didn't go from the battlefield to exile so that they can put it back to the command zone. No, it stays on the battlefield. It's part of your squad because Athreos willed it. Jiruta, Doom of Depths. In Demir colors, you get a Demon Kraken 6-6. Six, six. When Jiruta enters a battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. So you get to mill everyone, look at everyone's graveyards, and take any card, any creature that has an even CMC directly onto your 
side of the battlefield. You could be pretty advanced by creating a Demir deck, making this your companion. So you've got your commander plus your companion, and you're able to get both things out of that. Or make Jairuda the commander, and then you'll be able to replay it over and over. If you go the commander route, your starting deck must contain only cards with an even CMC, including lands. So pick what you want for this demon kraken. Next up in Rakdos colors, Zagras, Thief, of Heartbeats. Six mana, Vampire Rogue, 4-4. Four, four. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature in your party. So if you're going with a party type of deck, you can get some grace cost reductions here. Besides that, you get a flying, death-touching, hasting creature. And other creatures you control have death touch. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a planeswalker, destroy that. So you're giving planeswalker death touch to your creatures and Zagras has haste, that might be the creature that then does the final bit of damage to that annoying planeswalker that no one can touch. Zagras has definitely stolen my heart. Beats. And lastly, in Golgari colors, we have Shavil, Bane of Monsters, a human rogue who really likes to show off his chest. We get a 1-3 death touch creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponents control no permanents with bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. So you're kind of putting like those coin counters sort of on a creature or planeswalker. Whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, you gain three life and draw a card. So put those bounty counters on things when they go to the graveyard, you gain three life, draw a card rinse and repeat over and over and with a two mana cost of this commander you'll be bringing it back over and over no problem you will definitely be the bane of your opponents and that friends is my list of the top cards printed in 2020 for your commander decks in black we saw a variety of great mono black cards that will fit in a variety of decks. We saw a lot of great commanders to think about making new decks from. We talked a lot of great strategies for how these cards can synergize. And I want to hear your thoughts. What are cards that I missed? What are cards that I should have added in my various groups that you like to play that were printed in 2020? If you had a keen eye, you saw that these were the ones that were printed in a standard legal set. I did include things like Jumpstart, the 10 million Commander precons that we got, or even Commander Legends. I'm not taking the bait, wizards. Anyway, these are the cards that were printed in standard and regular old packs that I think will work great on your black-focused Commanders. The best color of magic, of course. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, ring the bell, battle the Minotaur to keep up to date with everything that I do. Perhaps consider going over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. There's a lot of rewards there starting at $1. At the $2 range, I'll actually mail you some vintage magic cards in appreciation. Or simply follow for free on Patreon to be alerted to everything that I do. Or subscribe here on YouTube where I've got my Magic the Gathering shorts where I give you some great info at one minute at a time. My deep dive videos like this. Brawl decks, Commander decks, Modern decks, Cracker Packs, all that good stuff about Magic that you love. Please subscribe and hit the bell. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you next time.